Hey guys, it's me, Soso. For those who don't know, I draw something every year to honor Malagasy Independence Day, June 26th. I decided to post today since I wanted to consistently upload on Fridays. When I first started drawing for Malagasy Independence Day, I illustrated the traditional outfits from the different regions of Madagascar. Then I made a wallpaper for all my Malagasy characters. This year, I decided to redraw some old artwork for a family project. My family has been writing adventures related to Ikut Fitsi and Imaka, so I drew covers for these stories. They were the best I could do at the time, and I'm still proud of them, but I know I can improve them. Since I didn't want to stress myself out, I only redrew the first cover. For this artwork, I wanted it to be as close to the original as possible, only with my updated art style and character quirks. The idea behind these book covers is that I wanted them to feel like cartoons. Like when a cartoon blends real life images and 3D models with 2D animation. Hence, I used real bricks, a shovel, and a chicken. I decided to use the same assets to keep the artwork as close to the original as possible. That way, I would get a direct comparison between my old art and my new one. The first thing I did was sketch out how I wanted it to read. It's very similar to the original artwork, but I fixed a few things. I remember my younger sister saying that Ikut Fitzi looked like a girl. I changed his pose and worked on his proportions. At first, his proportions looked like a child's. Then I remembered he was about 15, so I fixed that too. Then I moved on to Imaka. For Imaka, I kept his pose relatively the same. However, I wanted to give him the basket shown in the story. It provides more insight and makes his pose more interesting. In the original artwork, he's just staring into the distance without reason. He's not even looking at the camera. At the last minute, I decided to put his other hand down. That way, he's not just balancing on his legs when he's standing on the bricks. Unlike the previous drawing, I decided to actually draw the chicken. I had a couple of reasons for this. For starters, the chicken in the original looks stiff. Also, I did not know how to photoshop things, so I drew the chicken. This way, I would have much more control over the chicken's motion. I'm glad I made this decision. One of the biggest problems with the old illustration's background is just how badly done it is. So, I decided to improve upon it. One of my favorite pastimes is watching a lot of Photoshop artists, and I've picked up a lot of tips about shading. To make the bricks look more realistic, I started sharpening the edges with an eraser. It brings the bricks more in focus. It also gives a sense of realism. From there, I used the selection tool and filled a large area with blue instead of black. I debated on using black to shade, but blue looks nicer. It didn't look as harsh and was more pleasing to the eye. I then decided to add the shovel. The shovel was a little tricky because it was cut off in the original file. However, I managed. I had a little mishap here when I was shading because I had put a layer on color mode over the bricks earlier. So when I color picked the shading color, it came out slightly off. I ended up having to go back and readjust it. Additionally, I had to shift the shovel a bit when I drew in Kut Fitzi because I forgot to consider how his body would interact with the shovel. Finished, I decided to work on the line art. Since it was getting late, I used a non-pressure sensitive brush. It just made shading a lot easier later. Also, I still wanted to maintain that cartoony look to it. It was at this point that I found a new tool in Krita. Actually, I'm still determining how long this tool has been here. All I know is that I just found it. You know the tool in Clip Studio Paint where a selection tool can be used to fill in an area with color? Krita has a very similar tool. Since I had taken the liberty to ensure all my lines were closed during the line art stage, I could use this tool easily. I then worked on the chicken's line art, shaded everyone in, and decided I wanted to color in the line art. 
A cool tip for artists who wish to color in their line art quickly is putting your layer on alpha lock. It's right here on Krita. Other programs definitely have alpha lock. Um, unless you have Microsoft Paint, and in that case, good luck. And a quick Google search will show you where they are. It lets you color the actual layer without going over the lines. It's super helpful when you want to color in the line art. As a finishing touch, I added a couple of expressions to the characters. Without them, Imaka looks bored when he's actually just confused. I thought adding the little running lines on the chicken was funny. <laughs> Here's the final piece. This took a total of three hours to draw. Most of the time was spent in the sketching phase. It was easy to shade in everything because I already had the assets to make a realistic background. I can't say it looks natural, but it is an improvement. There were a couple things I was worried about in the artwork that turned out just fine. For example, Imaka has very baggy clothes because he wears his late grandfather's clothes. Yukutfitsi, on the other hand, has much better fitting clothes as he, he is the oldest sibling. This artwork better captures the idea that I wanted in the original. Overall, I had a lot of fun drawing this. That's all guys, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Filuma!